Hi folks, Bob Collins for Diver Supply. You know, I have a lot of questions that come in over the YouTube channel and I love it. One of the questions I was just reading was the fact about somebody using X amount of air and then their dive buddy using X amount of air. And you know, I've got a number of YouTube videos about tank use and big tanks, the, st the basics of tanks, low pressure tanks, that sort of thing. And I'm, I'm gonna put a link up here about that. But this discussion is just gonna be about you and how your air use and maybe your buddy's air use compares and maybe how to think about that sort of thing. Plus, I heard a comment and I've heard it more than once. You have to understand that when I'm talking to folks on the phone or I'm out here on the sales floor or whatever, and people make certain comments, I, I respond to them. And I'll tell you what I'm talking about it toward the end of the video, but mainly I'm gonna be talking about what we've got in front of us here. And I've got a mixture of tanks. These are, some of them are aluminum, some of them are steel. And so there's various and sundry buoyancy characteristics here. But one of the things I want to point out is cubic feet, air usage, and as people move forward in their training, they become more knowledgeable about what we call surface air consumption rate. But I'm not going to go into that sort of thing. I'm just going to talk about this gentleman that, that sent me a note, how much air he uses versus his lady dive buddy. And again, I appreciate you sending that question in because it generates videos like this. Now, what I've got in front of me, and, and pretty much I'm gonna kinda, kinda go by size. These are steels and these are aluminums. Now, this tank right here, this is a steel high pressure and I'm talking about 3442, high pressure 80. Now these are round numbers, I don't need comments that hey, this is point, 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 and that sort of thing. It's just, let's just use round numbers so the mass majority of folks out there can, can understand where I'm going with this. So this is a compact 80, this is a steel, this is steel also, this is a steel 100, and I'm gonna be pointing to something else in a second. This is a steel 100. This is a steel 117. And this is a steel 120. This is a steel 133. And of course, what you're able to see from there is you're able to see these from the front. Now this tank is 7.25 inches around. The 100 is the same, 7.25. The 117 you see is shorter, but it's, it's, it's bigger in its diameter. It's eight inches around. And then here's our 120, our high pressure 120. Sorry, I'm kind of bent over here. But this is our high pressure 120. The reason it looks different is because I didn't have one in the stock behind me here, so I grabbed one out of the service department so you could see what I'm talking about. It's got a nitrox wrap on it, some stuff like that. It's even got a service tag on it. But I wanted you to see what the 120 looks like. You can see how much taller it is than the rest of these. Even the 117 is here, and the 120 top of the valve is up here. I did a video about and it was meant a little bit in jest, but when I was out and doing the Long Beach show, I had a couple come to me and he was like really tall and she was really short. And this video I did, again, I'll put a link up here, maybe one in the description. He was real tall, she was short, and the video is about tanks for vertically challenged people or divers. And they got a laugh out of it, but they, they didn't realize that there were 80 cubic foot tanks that are this size, so she could carry the same amount of air as he was carrying. So, you know, you just never know about 
how these videos are going to impact people and what people are going to take away from them. And so that's our 120. This is a beast. It's shorter than the 120, but it's round like the 117. This is a 133. And of course, over here, these three aluminums, this is a 53 aluminum. It's the same diameter as our 80 and our 100 over here in the 120, 7.25. That's kind of the standard as far as the industry goes, all right? And then we've got a 63 sitting right here. And then this pinky back here, this is kind of that industry standard 80 cubic foot aluminum tank. And we see these in many colors. You see them on dive boats. You see them in, in des dive destinations, that sort of thing. And it may sound a little corny, but I call the comp uh, this aluminum 80, I call this our 70 mile an hour speed limit. Now, can you go faster? Sure, you can go faster. Can you go slower? Yes, you can go slower. But this is kind of the industry standard. And I would say that because of this. If you're out diving on a 60 foot reef, which is the nominal depth limit for a open water scuba diver with the mass majority of agencies out there, and you're diving this 80, depending on if you're really excited, maybe you're new, whatever it happens to be, then this is about a 35 minute tank on a 60 foot reef, which means you're gonna be diving about 55 feet or so. So you have to remember the no decompression limit on a 60 foot reef on air, depending on the algorithm or the computer you're looking at, I'm going to round it at 52 minutes. Yeah, it might be 55 on yours, but I'm going to use 52. So if, you, if you're able to stay 30, 35 minutes on this 80, then you're well within your no decompression limit, which is, it's great. And it protects you and most of the dive boats will say everybody up within an hour. The reason why is because some of the divers on the boat are using 100s, 117s, 120s, and Lord of Mercy, 133. So they're able to stay down longer. Now, an hour 60 minutes, the NDL is 52. So hopefully those divers are diving on nitrox. And that's where I was making the comment about some people tell me, oh, well, nitrox is about diving deeper. No, folks, it's not about diving deeper. It's about diving longer. But here's the deal. It's not just about diving longer. If you're using an 80 and you're breathing air or you're breathing, nit breathing nitrox, you're gonna be there for the same amount of time because it's, nitrox is not gonna slow your, your, your breathing rate down. It's just gonna give you more protection from that res or, or a decrease in your residual nitrogen. So think of it that way. Now, this gentleman was saying that when he, they were using 80s, and when they would come up, his dive buddy, she was at 1500, and he was at 1000 when they ended their dive and they're you know, coming up. So when you look at that, in essence, if you divide, take the 3,000, divide it into six, she's using three six, he's using four six. So in essence, he's using about, about, about 17% more air than her. So his comment was, well, I'll just buy 133. And that's fine if you want to do that. But now you're taking a tremendous amount more air. So a set, uh, you know, an 80, here's a 100. So this is 20% more air than this. A 120 is 40% more air. So a 133 is like 47% more air. This is a beast of a tank. And when you're coming up a dive ladder with a 133, 
you're going to tell it. And if you've not experienced it before, I'm telling you, it can be a backfull. So because this is a, a hunk of steel. So do you really need a 133? And what's the practicality of using a 133? Is the price that much difference over a 100? And no, it's not a tremendous amount more. But if you're not going to be using this extra air, and now you're coming up with 25% more air than she is, you're, you're, you're enduring something you don't need to endure. You're slapping around this big tank. So do you really need that? Just, just go with a 100. And in essence, of the steel tanks that we sell here at Diver Supply, the 100 is predominantly the strongest seller. Now, the techie types and some of the spearfisher people out there, they're diving nitrox because they're diving longer, like with a 133 or a 120. And of course, you have to have the vertical torso height to be able to handle this tank. So if you're a little shorter in the torso, maybe a 117 instead of a 120. See the difference? So you're not bumping your head or it's not hitting you in the top of the butt versus a 133. But if you're, if you're, if you're doing spearfishing out there and you guys are carrying redundant air sources and you're not together depending on each other's, you know, uh, alternate air, then yeah, fine, dive a 133. You're capable of doing that. You're diving proper nitrox based on, remember your max, um, uh, max operating depth on whatever nitrox you're using. And if you haven't taken the nitrox course, it's the one course that I tend to get a little bit on the soapbox about because personally, I think everybody should be nitrox certified, especially you divers that are getting a little older, as we get older, our bodies process air less efficiently. So you're better off, you're safer, you're better off by using nitrox. And what I was gonna just interject real quick, remember that 52 minute on air that I was talking about over here? So now you're diving these bigger tanks. On nitrox 32 on a 60 foot reef, the NDL goes from 52 to 90. So use the bigger tanks. You're not going to, I mean, the boat's saying come up within an hour, but now instead of 35 minutes, you're staying down 55 minutes. So you're getting 20 minutes extra on this dive, usually doing two dives on the dive boat. Now you're doing 20 minutes extra on this dive, 20 minutes extra on this dive. It's like you just got three dives for the price of two. So when you start looking at steel tanks and you start looking at nitrox and the wisdom and using these particular um, uh, pieces of equipment and resources as far as your air, it's not, uh, nitrox is really not a lot more expensive than, than air is, but it's safer. As long as you don't abuse that, that maximum operating depth. But Again, I wanted to take a few minutes, shoot this video, put it out there to you folks. Again, I really enjoy uh, the comments that you folks send me. And we've crossed over 9,000. We're headed to 10,000. Please, if you have not hit the subscribe button, remember it doesn't cost you a thing. And I would deeply appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button down there and help me zoom past that 10,000 mark. It's a goal I set for the channel about five years ago. And I appreciate your help doing that. Again, Bob Collins for Diver Supply. As I always say, dive safe out there. Thanks for watching.